And welcome everybody to the 2021 International Clarinet Association Research Competition. I'm Jane Ellsworth. I'm the Research uh, Competition Coordinator. I'd like to introduce our panel of judges and thank them very much for their service. We have Liz Alexander, we have Lori Baruth, and Antoine Clark. Thank you so much for serving as judges for this competition. And we have five presenters from different parts of the world, which I'm really, really glad to say. Um, we have someone from the Canary Islands, we have a presenter from Brazil, and we have three presenters from the United States. So welcome to all our presenters. Stacey, let's go on to the next presenter. This is Anderson Cesar Alves coming to us from Brazil, welcome. And his paper is called Clarinet Expert Teacher, Investigation on Pedagogical Practices in Music Performance. So thank you, Anderson. Let me make you able to share your screen. Okay. One moment. Like, oh yeah, there it is. All right, I think you are ready to go here. And I will make sure that you get your full 25 minutes, even though we're running okay. a couple of minutes behind. So no hurry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can you see? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Anderson Cesar Alves. I'm clarinetist from Brazil, from National Symphony Orchestra in Brazil, and researcher. And I'll present this paper, The Clarinet Expert Teacher, an Investigation on Pedagogical Practices in Music Performance. Introduction. This paper is the result of a recently concluded doctoral research, which invokes a debate about the assessment of expert teachers in music performance. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I have to, to tend to here. Okay. And I have investigated the pedagogical practices in the field fieldwork underline the characteristics of the expert clarinet teacher, especially in Brazilian, especially in Brazilian, sorry, I have investigated the pedagogical practices in the fieldwork underline the characteristics of the expert clarinet teacher, especially in the Brazilian music scenario. This investigation aims at approximating research on teacher expertise in areas such as skill development dreadfuls, 1980, Education Berliner 1988, and the NBBTS Platform 2002, which presents the characteristics observed in the evaluation and certification of expert teacher in other areas of knowledge. This approach has raised questions about the use of these attributes to describe the qualities of the expert clarinet teacher. Research obje objective. This research aims at analyzing the teaching practices deployed by expert clarinet teachers. It also describes the approach resorted by these teachers in the development of a high-level instrumental performance. Research question, what pedagogical approaches are used by expert clarinet teachers to develop the high level of students' performance? Here is table one. Uh, with it consists in eight fields of competencies, and the, the, in the first column I have uh, the research of Dreyfus and Dreyfus, 1980, Berliner, 1988, on the field of education, and BPTS platform, 2002, and the fourth column is mine column, with cons it consists in eight fields of hypothesis that grounded the observation. Data generation instruments. The methodological framework employed here was based on cross-reference data obtained through 1. Concurrent protocol analysis, 2. Semi-structured interview with three teachers, and 3. Semi-structured interview with three t students from each teacher. The criteria for the choice of the three teachers are directly related to the high level of their students. Professor Lucas has been a clarinetist for 50 years, of which 30 as a clarinet teacher. Professor Felipe has been a clarinet, 
clarinetist for 38 years of which 28 as a clarinet teacher and Professor Gabriel has been a clarinetist for 31 years of which 20 as a clarinet teacher. Concurrent protocol analysis. A structured lesson observation based on the descriptive model in Table 1 was grounded in concurrent protocol analysis, Ericsson 2006. The central assumption of concurrent protocol analysis is that it is possible to instruct the participants to verbalize their thinking that done in a way that does not alter the sequence and content of thoughts that mediate a completion of a task. The results of this is a process that should immediately reflect the information available during reflection. Edison, 2006. Four clarinet lessons were recorded with each of the three teachers involved in research, and each lesson was an average two hours long. Here, here is one photo of Ericsson. Ericsson was my co-advisor, and he taught me how to use his protocol. And Ericsson was willing to guide me in the application of his protocol as a main data generating device of my research. He emphasized the importance of video recording the lessons of participant teacher. Thus, as soon as each observed class had ended, all the materials recorded by the video camera was downloaded to a computer. Next, the participant teacher was invited to analyze the record of their classes. The purpose of this action was to make this teacher recall their strategies and pedagogical decisions made during the lessons they were just finished. And unfortunately, uh, Erickson passed at the end of the research and he didn't know the results. The adaptation made by me regarding the application of the protocol following the Edison's advice was to record the classes while bearing in mind that under no circumstances, either the recording or the teachers were to be interrupted for the purpose of questioning them about their actions. This required a continuous camera monitoring to record every activity and take notes about the minute they happened. Erickson noted that the retrospective analysis of the video together with my notes would be sufficient for the teacher to recall their memories, would not impair the fluence of the lessons, nor would it interrupt the natural development of the process until they were finished. Same structure interview with teachers. Same structure interview was based on a pre established script with eight questions directly related to the competencies constituting the fields in Table 1. Same structured interview with students. The work of musical instrument teacher is almost always developed in a related, isolated way. Kruger 2000. In order to minimize the negative effect of this isolation with respect to direct access to the re reality of the teaching learning process, I interviewed a group of three students for each teacher. Triangulation. Data were generated through the technique of triangulation between the data analyzed from the three collection instruments. Denzin and Lincoln 2006 defined triangulation as the combination of methods used to investigate an interrelated phenomenon from multiple and different angles or perspectives. Results. The observation and data collection protocols generated 320 gigabytes of data. Initially, my goal was simply to verify the pertinence of each field as regards pedagogical expertise and music performance, as shown in Table 1, in order to validate them. The profusion of that data allowed the re-evaluation of Table 1 and the creation of Table 2, review of domains of competency of the pedagogue expert in music performance. A proposal for mapping the competency of expert teacher. Awareness of performance corporeality. The whole of the body in the expert systematic pedagogical strategies so remarkably observable in the data analysis was not described in Table 1. Here is a situation that was completely unexpected. They they talked about the, the, the body, not the body that the press finger and release finger. They talked about the body, the body that understand the music, the musical understanding. 
and this finding in turn led to the elaboration of the final framework Table 3 with I have named Domains of Competency of the Pedagogical Expert in Music Performance. Here is the table, Table 3, Domains of Competency of the Pedagogical Expert in Music Performance, and unfortunately I'll not have time to read it, but it's it, it, it has seven fields of competency. Discussion. The expert teacher demonstrates a broad mastery of knowledge and practice of the complex pattern of music performance, which is a result of both their own expertise as a performer and the expertise that is amassed over decades of working as a music performance teacher. The expert teacher expanded vision allows them to use mental schemas represented visually, gesturally, as a way to convey thoughts, feeling, and musical understanding. The expert teacher is endowed with the awareness of performance corporeality, a methodology that targets not only the performance motor ability to operate the musical instruments, but also the ways in which the performer understands music and each and every action embodied in music performance. The expert teacher holistically assesses the performance contest and uses accurate pattern to recognize the learning process of their students. The expert teacher develops the ability to resort to the pedagogical decisions in order to circumvent performance problems through harnessing creative problem solving strategies that suit the needs, characteristics and potential of each student. The expert teacher works systematically in the refinement of perception and cognition in the context of performance while carrying this out with deliberate practice, self-regulation and metacognition. The expert teacher's work is constantly updated and engaged in dialogue with contemporary reality, whose major aim is to is the formation of flexible musicians who are strongly connected to the contemporary world. In their role as a facilitator for the student learning experience, the expert teacher is readily resourceful. They speculate with tools and devices, which will succinctly said, smoothing root path, maximizing results, and bring up proposals aimed at practical understanding as well as overall reflection on performance. Discussion. Individual characteristics of each teacher. Data the data analysis available led us to infer that each of the teachers possess characteristics with by proximity related to research in psychology and education. Professor Lucas, related to humanistic psychology, by which then it's the individual is seen as holistic being, humanistic psychology has its origins in the major assumption of Abraham Maslow, who elevated it as an institution of the pyramid, pyramid of needs. It was in the 50s that Maslow became one of the founders and driving forces behind the humanistic psychology school of thought. A quotation about Professor Humanist. I think that is the only thing I'm through to and do for everyone is that I like the human being and I have respect for them. I always have a lot of patience to be careful with all and try not to hurt everyone and make them cry. Because first of all, I think of the, of the human being only afterwards can declare in it. Professor Gabriel, guided by the nature of his practices, I have conceived him as a cognitivist, inasmuch as the word cognition from the Latin cognition describes the process of acquiring, acquiring knowledge. As held by cognitive psychology, this knowledge is directly connected to various mental behaviors. Steinberg, 2010, defined cognitive psychology as the study of how people perceive, learn, remember, or think, or create schemes to process information. A quotation about cognitivist professor. I use schemes and perform a visual demonstration with my hands. At high points in the performance, I raise my hands. At low points, I lower my hands. And the results improve when the students understand these visual relationships. I draw a mind map based on visualization of melodic movement. And this is also a memorization strategy. 
Professor Felipe, I have defined him as a critical reflective teacher based on the inference of John DeWay, because the term reflective professional has as one of its roots the ideas of the later, who influenced the work of many researchers to make use of the elements of reflection in order to improve their teaching task. Reflective, critical reflective, a quotation. If the student does not visualize the image and does not perceive this image reflected in his body, he is not doing anything. The choice are always to make that image clearer, to control these images in order to see what is happening. If the student can visualize this image, he can repeat this image. If it has clarity, weight, smell. Seeing in music is related to our listening. We have to be connected visually inward, but audibly outward, to perceive and feel the sensations and vibrations, hear the perception of vibration. But in general, the body has to visualize this internal image of what is happening. In my view, the excerpt above clearly support and align with the data presented herein, insofar as the question be posed. What smell and weight does the music have? And how can this mental image be reflected in the performer's body? Conclusion. The analysis of data generated through the observation protocol used in this research point out that the three teachers developed their own styles in teaching music performance. It was through deep analysis into their teaching practice that I identified their teaching styles to be in dialogue with research grounded in the field of psychology and education. The three teachers' different approaches by anal analogy related to a school of thought, the, such as humanistic practice, cognitivist psychology, and critical reflective pra practices in education. Concomitantly, my findings was that this approach can, in turn, not only contribute to development of different forms of clarinet teaching, it can also effectively con contribute to the achievement of a high-level performance by students. This is my references, and thank you. Thank you so much, Anderson. That's very, very interesting. Um, I wonder if it would be helpful if you could put your presentation maybe back to table number three, the last table that you created that um, that kind of had the final version of the competencies on it. Oh, okay, one moment. Is that possible? That might be helpful that we could look at it. Um, okay. <laughs> Making you do a lot of work, sorry. Okay, no problem. Intra over. Here, table one. I, I, I was hoping for the last version of that table as you revised it. Okay, the, the table three. Yeah, number three. Okay, over here. Yeah, he, yeah, right, right. Um, <laughs> I know I'm just supposed to be the organizer, but I have some questions, but I'd like to let the judges ask their questions first. Okay. I'm not. Can we see the second page of this too? The second page? In... Okay, sorry, I have to. Oh, no, sorry, the second page of that table. Because it was like two seconds. Left. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're Sorry. Jump around. Sorry. <laughs> okay, this one. There we go. Yeah, there was a lot of information on these, and I think it's good for us to be able to look at them a little bit and digest it. So I guess I have two questions for you. Um, the first one, I thought that your conclusions about um, comparing these teachers different styles to um, psychology was really interesting. It was really interesting. I could certainly see myself within there too. Um, is that something that you found in other research or is that an idea that you had on your own? No, I had that the first moment when I, I was researching 
I started my, my PAT here in Brazil, I would like to, to know about expert teachers in music performance. And I came across papers just in areas such as skill development and education and the platform and BPTS uh, for evaluation of professors in high school in the United States. But uh, as I told, with Ericsson's advice, I, I, I used the, the protocol analysis and I recorded all the materials and I came across 320 gigabytes of information. Wow. <laughs> and to analyze all of that, I, I got sick. I had a pain, a pain in my, my yeah. elbow, elbow pain. <laughs> analyze all the material, but I got it. I think that I got it. Oh, and uh, I came across with uh, the very professors that have been teaching at 30 years at the same school, same university. They're 30 years teaching and uh, Professor Lucas, uh, uh, he has 18 students. And one thing that uh, uh, he's a humanist, his humanistic view, uh, I, 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 I was really interested in that, how to give a class to 18 students and how to, to prepare, how to solve problems, how to, uh, and uh, one, one of, of his, his students loves popular music. Chorinho in Brazil, Chorinho, all, all clarinetist people play Chorinho. I, I, I do play Chorinho too. I play Choro too, actually. <laughs> yes, and, and uh, she loves to play Chorinho, but in the, the final, the, the, the final test, what, she played Chorinho in, in her final recital I, I think and she, she played in it was impossible in Brazil many years ago because it was you have to to do this humanistic view he he, he chanted according to the characteristics of the students I think that it, it uh, we need to think about this in our pedagogical practices yeah yeah definitely um and I guess my other question is um after going through this study, how ha I'm assuming you teach too, how has your teaching evolved? One thing that I have learned, I'm cl a clarinetist from National Symphony Orchestra in Brazil. I play, I play first clarinet and E flat clarinet. And I do teach too. And one thing that I, I now, I, I have learned with this my own research, and I'm using with my students too, uh, the use of the body in the performance is not the body that press finger and release finger. It is not this body. It's the body that understand the music. How to understand? This is called uh, embodied cognition. Embodied cognition. How to? I always say to my students, bring your body into the performance. Bring your body. I want. Uh, you are playing okay. You are playing really good, but bring your body it, it doesn't mean to dance like to move your body it doesn't mean that it's mean to understand the music because fingers uh fingers it has memory kinesthetic kinesthetic memory yes that's it and at the final of the research i i i i i think every teacher has every teacher they have their characteristics and i I, the, 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 this research continues, and I went to the platform, the, the research platforms, and I, 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 I love this phrase that the, the Professor Lucas said, I, I, I love to teach because I love human being. First, I like human being, second, the clarinet. And I thought, this is a very humanistic view, and psychology, the humanist psychology defining his, his, his professor, the, the, the the psychology, human, humanistic psychology. And Professor, Professor Felipe, he's very critical, critical. He criticizes all the things, but the same way he creates, he creates uh, uh, solutions. He, he cr criticizes and every time it is a, a solution. And many of, many of 
his students is in German. Stud they are in German studying uh, techniques, um, contemporary techniques in music performance. And uh, Professor Gabriel is a, a, a professor that knows a lot about cognitive psychology. And he developed techniques to, mem to memorize pieces to and this is the result this is mine I, I went to to the platforms and I, I thought that it could be possible to to name them that's it thank you other okay yeah yeah I had a question I really found this to be fascinating and I found myself as you were explaining all these things thinking about not just myself as a teacher but my teachers and what categories they might fall into and, and, and how we can, you know, continue to be better, better teachers for our students and, and what kind of successes. But um, I actually was interesting uh, thinking about uh, Professor Gabriel, I believe you said, is the, the cognitive uh, one who was, you know, thinking about how people perceive and learn and remember things. Or, and, um, and I thought, I think you mentioned, he, you know, would use his hands to create gestures and help them think about using their bodies. And I have studied a bit of Dalcos rhythmics, and it made me think about how we try and incorporate the use of your full body into playing or singing. So it's not just, as you mentioned, the fingers. And I thought there might be a next step there to maybe connect those who are um, cognitive psychology related teachers into um, who has done some eurythmics or what that might look like if they, if they did. I thought that was a neat um, connection there. Um, I guess my question for you is, um, did you find that any of the three um, categories of teachers um, were like more successful with their students or did you find them to be equally like the students were all happy with those kinds of teaching methods? No, every, every professor, they have their own characteristics and the results are incredible, are incredible. But I, I have been studying uh, cognitive psychology since 2011. And in my, my in my master, I have studied the expertise, but looking at the performer, how did they the 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 high 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 level in their their performance, and I I came across there with a well established way to study. They have been practicing deliberate practice, the lib de determined coined by Carl Ander Erikson, that co-advised me. And, and uh, here at Rio de Janeiro, for example, the professor used a lot, a lot of cognitive techniques to teach their students. Uh, I think that in the, the first book that they, they, they read is Deliberate Practice about it. all the, the the papers about Ericsson's because over there you you is it possible to to create techniques to memorize music how to memorize music you uh, you can you can use these techniques and uh, uh, humanistic professor uh, he doesn't know, for example, this term deliberate practices, but the way that he teaches is by proximity near, but just he doesn't know this. But uh, the, the, the research that I have been looking uh, show that the, cogn the, the cognitive psychology is a uh, is a support for the preparation. You can rely on that, read bo books, and uh, read all the Ericsson's book, the Williamson's book, Diana Deutsch book, that help a lot in the pre preparation of the performance. And the results are incredible. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think we need to stop for our break now, but you've generated a lot of questions and, and interesting thoughts with your presentation. So thank you very much.